and good morning, good afternoon and good evening. It's Mr. Kanwa, Associate Director of Science, and guess what? We are back to space, as you can clearly see uh, from the intro. So what are we learning today, or what are we learning this week? We're on lesson five, so if you remember, we've done four lessons previously on space, then we did a bit, we did a few lessons on rocks, uh, and then we've done some lessons on the body system, so my colleagues have uh, sent you through or taken you through uh, the earth and your body and now we are back to space and we're going on to quite an interesting topic um, definitely one slightly out there and it's on constellations something we might all know something about but perhaps we don't really know much about so what are we going to do today our challenge is to recall and date the zodiacal constellations of the year and our aspire today is to describe how constellations have developed historically. Now, most of us, it is fair to say, might know, might think they know something about constellations. The likelihood is you do. Uh, and the ones that I'm going to be talking about today are the constellations that are within the zodiac. So those of you who are astrology fans or like their um, star signs reading, this might be in particular interest to you. So, as ever, what do we need for our lesson? Simply a pen and a piece of paper. You will need a ruler because we are going to draw a table uh, in a little bit, but that's all we require for today's lesson. And as always, with all my lessons, I like to have a recap of our previous learning. Now, it's been a while, so you'll, um, hopefully you can remember quite a few of the facts that we remembered. So, these are four dates you need to put down. 1957, 1969, 1971 and 1977. Our last lesson, which was one, two, three, four weeks ago. So our last lesson, which was four weeks ago, was on space exploration. And we learned about a timeline in regards to space exploration. I'm going to show you four images. Image number one, that is of Sputnik 2. What I want you to do is I want you to match that image to the correct date timeline of when it was launched. So you've got Sputnik 2, you can see the dog called Laika, and that was the first dog in space, or first animal in space, I should say. We have then also got Salyut 1, which is the first man-made space station that entered the orbit of Earth and essentially was in space. We also have the Voyager space probe. So you've got Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And if you remember correctly, they were both launched at, in the same year. And they're both currently out in the outer reaches of our solar system. And the final image is of the Apollo moon landing. So it's Apollo 11 and it is of the moon landing. So what you've got, you've got four images. One, and I will colour them in for you. We've got one, we've got two, We've got three and we've got four. I'm going to give you approximately 30 seconds to have a go and see if you can match that one, two, three, four with the correct year. And whilst you're doing that, I'll just remind you of what each uh, of the images represent. So number one is of Sputnik 2. Number two, Salyut 1, which is the first man-made space station. Number three is of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And number four it is Apollo 11. So I'll give you another 10 seconds. And your time is up. So let's have a look through the answers. So 1957 was the launch of Sputnik 2. So that was number one. So 1957 is number one. 1969 or 1969 links in with picture number four, the Apollo 11 landing. So you've got the Apollo 11 landing in 1969. 1971 is the Salyut 1 space station. So that is number two. So 1971 is number two. And that leaves the Voyager space probes from 1977. So that was just a quick recap of last lesson which was approximately four weeks ago so hopefully you got those right if you didn't maybe go back and have a look at that lesson again just to reintroduce yourself 
uh, to the timeline. So cracking on with today's lesson, go straight into it. What are constellations? So before we even think about what are zodiacal constellations, what are constellations? What is your understanding of constellations? And I think for most people, they will say, well, they are star signs, sir, aren't they? They're just simply star signs. You look in the sky, you see some constellation. They might look like an animal. They might look like some sort of being, or they might be an object. Well, there's a technical, there's a technical definition of what is a constellation. What I might do is I'm going to give you 30 seconds to come up with what you think a constellation is. So with your pen and paper, I want to give you 30 seconds to write down what you think is a constellation. And to help you with that, I'll give you a quick countdown. Right, there we go. Now, I wasn't expecting, I have to admit, I wasn't expecting you to have the full def astral, astronomical definition uh, on there. Um, I was hopefully expecting something on the lines of it's a, let's just say, a group of stars that have lines between them that make some sort of image. The actual definition that we have got is, and I'll read it out to you, a constellation is an area on the celestial sphere. Now, let me show you what that is. Okay, so before we carry on, I need to explain what a celestial sphere is. You can see that the Earth is in the middle of that image. And it seems, and it is not, it, it seems, it's not reality, that everything else in the universe, so to say, or definitely in the near, near space uh, arena around Earth, is surrounding it so it's like the earth is the center of the world well in actual fact if you stood on the earth you can pretty much regard yourself as being center and when you look outwards you see a projection you basically see a, a group of visible stars and some of them outline a perceived pattern that then represents an animal a mythological person a creature or inanimate object such as the scales and so forth. So um, that's that's basically what you see. And, and the celestial sphere is basically the, the area of the seen universe around the Earth. So it's what you can see in terms of the night sky um, pretty much every night. If, if it was a clear night, that's what you would see. And that second image is looking at it in a bit more detail. And you can see, and some of them are very well known to us, you can see that there are constellations here. And if I circle them, you know, Capricorn, Sagittarius, Scorpio, that you can see from the Earth at various points in the year. So here we've got January. So if you lived on this side of the Earth, OK, and it was night, then you would expect to see in January Gemini and probably Taurus, and cancer and that's what you would see in the night sky you would have that sort of kind of vision outwards if you lived um on again this side of the this side of the earth and it was night uh and it was we were in may i should use a different color i should so if you were in may there we go you would see these star signs scorpio libra and virgo and so it seems and how constellations work so it seems that as the year goes on so the earth journeys through a group of constellations so you can see it sees all these constellations in its yearly journey they happen to be the zodiacal constellations so what are the zodiacal constellations as i said they are the ones they are the stars 
groups that you can see pretty much every night. Now there's a certain definition that is required for this. So we saw that there's um, there's a kind of center, there's a kind of center to this uh, celestial sphere that you can call it. So it's a kind of a, um, a circular diameter type uh, type thing. Um, and if you look eight degrees north of it and eight degrees south of it, that area, that area, there are a group of stars that we call the zodiac. And it wasn't just us who first saw these. There is an image of the ancient Egyptians actually um, recording their version of the zodiac in 2000 BC. There are a group of constellations there that are, that are made by the Babylonians. This was around 1000 BC. So you can see there are some very similar ones to what we have now and there are some that we don't know. So for example, if I were to point out, this is in 1000 BC, the Babylonians, which is an ancient Middle Eastern civilization, came up with Scorpio. You can see that there. And then this was formalized by the Greeks. So you can see the Greeks and then the Romans came up with their own zodiacal uh, constellation. So what we have are the 12, and there are 12, zodiac signs um, of the current, um, I say of the current, what am I talking about, uh, uh, that, are, that have been currently accepted. There are actually 88 constellations that have been accepted or have been um, signed off, so to say, by the Astronomical Society. However, 12 of them are the zodiac ones and we make horoscopes from it, i.e. they talk about star signs. So we've got in no particular order, but we can start off. We've got Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus. Now you may wonder, isn't it a bit, this is a strange concept really, because um, the likelihood is you probably know your star sign, but why do you know a star sign? Well, it goes back to ancient days and how it used to work was there are a lot of civilizations and a lot of cultures where when you are born, it's an auspicious, you know, a, a special occasion. We call we use the word auspicious in that sense. So it was an uh, auspicious occasion. And say if you were born on the 13th of May, for example. So on the 13th of May, um, you would look um, at that particular star sign and that particular star sign would have a set of names. And then because you would have a set of names, from there, you were actually named from your star sign. So it wasn't a question of, oh, do you know what? I want to call my child Billy or I want to call my child Bob or Shania or something. It was actually, well, I, he was born on the 15th of May. Which names could I call this child? So they'll reel out the priest or the um, lay person who believed in the astrological signs would reel out a list of names and they'll say, right, you could call him Larry, Bob, Jemima, obviously it was a boy or a girl, um, <laughs> or Laura, and then you'd have to pick their name accordingly. Now, I'm not saying everyone did that, but those who believed in the astro astrological, now this is slightly different to astronomy, astrology is the study of the zodiacal constellations more so, and therefore the horoscopes from there. Astronomy is the study of space and the stars, that's slightly different. Um, so, so the study of astrology was therefore kind of intertwined within the name and it happens in a lot of cultures and even now today it does. So what we are going to do is we're going to uh, produce a table with each of the constellations and we're going to go through this quite quickly. So what I want on your table there are 12 constellation names that we're going to go through so you need to go 13 rows down four columns across. The reason why you're going 13 is because you need a title. Uh, so you have constellation name. What is it? Like, you know, okay, fair enough, it's Taurus, but what actually is Taurus? The zodiacal dates, when does it occur? And the Greek symbol given to it um, as a representative. Um, so that's what we're going to collect um, in terms of the information in regards to the next um, 12 slides. So hopefully you are ready. Pause this video if you need a bit of time to collect uh, or to draw the table I should say.
So our first constellation is the constellation Aquarius. And Aquarius is also known as the water bearer. So that's what it is. Aquarius is the constellation name. And the constellation um, of Aquarius represents the cupbearer. And where did that cupbearer come from? Well, it comes from the Greeks. Basically, he gave drinks to the gods on Mount Olympus. So he was literally a kind of uh, butler, I suppose you could say, that just that just gave the drinks. The constellation also represented water in many other of the other cultures that we have. So what we've got is we've got Aquarius. He is the water bearer. The dates uh, that we specifically designate those times uh, is January the 20th to February the 18th. That's the Aquarius uh, star sign. And the symbol of Aquarius is, as you can see, this rather strange symbol here, this kind of, I don't know, elongated M, I suppose. Um, actually, I, I, I should clarify something here, because does that mean you see in the sky Aquarius from January the 20th to February the 18th? Not exactly. The actual dates that these that the actual star groupings that you see in the sky isn't the same. And this is really important. Isn't the same as the horoscope version, if you see what I'm saying. So these are the zodiac standardized version of the dates. These are not the dates. They are roughly they're roughly the dates, but they are not the dates that you'd actually see Aquarius in the sky. So sometimes there are some constellations that you would see over 40 days, even though the horoscope or the, I should say the, the astrological um, dates are, say, 30 days or 28 days or 29 days. They've kind of made it very even between them. a Scorpio, for example, you actually only see in the sky for approximately nine days. So you don't actually see it for the period of time that the astrological sign says that it is in the sky and therefore you read your star sign from it. So that's something to be wary of if you think that you can see Aquarius at the date or between the dates of January the 20th and February the 18th. Like it is, it you'll see it some during that point at some point, but not during those actual dates. So that's something, uh, again, like I said, to be wary of. So that is Aquarius. We then move on to Pisces, which is the fish. And there's actually two fish. You can't really call it the fishes. Uh, some people do, but it is the fish. And the dates that Pisces involve is February the 19th to March the 20th. So it's an early spring or just before spring, the onset of spring, I should say. And the Pisces symbol is kind of a you know, semi-circular H. So, you know, you've got these... Uh, uh, it's like a bent H, I should say. So there we go. So that is the symbol for Pisces. Now, in in terms of the story behind it, um, it comes again from the Greek uh, myths. So in the myth, Gaia, the earth goddess, the goddess's youngest son, Typhon. So there was a so Gaia, the earth goddess, had a son called Typhon, um, was so bad that the... Uh, that the gods didn't even want to fight him. Basically, he was uh, a terrific fighter. So when Typhon attacked Olympus, the gods just simply left. They couldn't fight him, so they simply left. They went to Egypt. However, they disguised themselves as animals. And so that's what they did. So they disguised themselves as animals. Now, two of those animals were Aphrodite and Eros. Aphrodite being the goddess of love and Eros being the, the god of them. Uh, and um, they disguised themselves on their travels to Egypt as fish. And that swam down the Nile, the river Nile, in, into Egypt. So in representation of the fact that both Aphrodite and Eros escaped the attack of Typhon upon Olympus, both of them turned themselves into fish. And that's what Pisces represents. So that is basically Aphrodite and Eros in the sky. Our third constellation is Aries, also known as the Ram. Now, um, I know I've gone through the first two without actually saying this. How did ancient observers think that that looked like a Ram and therefore called it Aries? 
That is a very good question. I don't quite know how they thought that looked like a ram, but they clearly had very vivid imaginations um, that they thought that looked like a ram. Even so, it has been accepted that that looks like a ram. Now, they are the major stars within that constellation. There are quite a few stars that are linked with Aries, and you can see here on the other image of Aries that you know you've got you've got a fair group of stars at various points. However, those are the major stars that make up, and that is the line that is drawn for Aries, the constellation line that makes it up. Aries symbol is a lovely curved V type symbol, basically representing the two rams. And where does it come? Again, the old Greeks have come up with this. So in Greek mythology, Aries was clearly a, la a ram, I should say. Um, what ram or which ram was he? Well, the likelihood is it was from the Golden Fleece. So many fighters, many heroes search for the Golden Fleece. Uh, and eventually, you can see there's a film actually, Jason and Argonauts, eventually they got the fleece because it gave them protection uh, from the gods. So the Golden Fleece is said to be this very ram. We then move to Taurus, uh, which is also known as the bull. And this has got a very um, Egyptian type symbol. It looks like uh, the symbol for Amun-Ra. You know, you've got the circular sun and the winged disc. However, that is the disc, that is the face of the bull uh, with its horn. So Taurus, that's the symbol. It, it, the dates that Taurus uh, belongs to, or astrological sign is early spring so april the 20th to may the 20th um like i said it represents the bull in the greek mythology in greek mythology i should say the bull was zeus so it was actually zeus when he turned into a bull to capture the love of a woman called europa now if you remember back to some of my previous lessons we learned about europa being a moon of jupiter one of the one of the galilean moons of Jupiter. So for some reason Zeus thought it was best that he turned himself into a bull to attract this woman called Europa. Did it work? Supposedly it did. So there we go. So Zeus turned himself into a bull to get himself a woman called Europa and that is the story behind Taurus. So what do we have so far? We've done four constellations. We've got Aquarius, Pisces, Aries and Taurus. We've got the water bearer, the fish, the ram and the bull and then the zodiacal dates. I'm not going to go through those. What I'll do is I'll allow you to pause the video at this point if you want to collect those dates at that point and the symbols that are there. So if you want to collect those you just pause the video here and you can collect those. Otherwise we shall continue. On to Gemini. So Gemini is known as the twins. Um, strange, they're not actually twins, but we'll come to that in a second. So Gemini, known as the twins. Um, the date that Gemini is represented is May 21st to June 21st. And it is like the Roman numeral two. So like the Roman numeral two, that is the symbol for Gemini. Now, they are actually half brothers, the twins. They are known as Castor, and Pollux. So when Castor was killed, Pollux was so sad that Zeus let him visit Castor in the underworld. And whilst he visited him in the underworld, he was therefore dead himself. So what Zeus decided to do was quite nicely decided to place them both into heaven, which they regarded the stars, and both Castor and Pollux uh, lived there eternally. So nice happy ending, you could say, to that story. So that is Gemini, the not-so-twins. Uh, we then move on to Cancer, which is also known as the Crab, um, and the dates that uh, Cancer resides is between June the 22nd and July the 22nd, and um, the symbol for Cancer is like a side on six and nine if you can say so. So what you've got is a six and nine that is side on and that is the symbol for Cancer. Now the story of the Cancer is quite interesting. So Cancer was sent by the Hydra to fight against Hercules and his brother whilst 
he was fighting the Hydra. This is a multi-headed um, monster. Um, so therefore, they decided to place Cancer near the location of Gemini and Leo. So that's all Cancer is. It was basically a massive crab that was sent to fight Hercules uh, on the behest on because um, the Hydra had sent him. Uh, research Hydra, and then you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about. But it's a multi-headed uh, being. We now move on to Leo. Now, Leo, fairly straightforward. The lion. Um, the dates that we've got is from July the 23rd to August the 20th, um, August 22nd. And if I may say so, um, it does seem that the symbol of Leo just basically lo looks like the um, technical drawing of a sperm cell, to be honest. Um, so what you've got is Leo and we have got a symbol that doesn't really look like a lion, but presumably it's a head with a tail. Um, so that is Leo the lion. What does it represent? Nemean, the lion in Greek mythology. Now, Nemean's skin was resistant to all weapons. However, the Greek hero Hercules fought Nemean and rather than kill him because he couldn't, because he was resistant to all weapons, he decided to choke him. This obviously then killed him. And then after killing Nemean, Hercules skinned him. This is important. So he skinned him. And because he was not able to, because he's obviously his skin was resistant to all weapons, he decided to put on his skin to fight the Hydra. So remember the cancer was sent by the Hydra. So it goes back to the Hydra story. And Hercules then fights um, the Hydra with Leo's skin and was therefore not defeated by the Hydra. The Greeks did have a vivid imagination and we go on to the final one in this section, which is Virgo, known as the Maiden. And it looks like an M with an extra loop uh, as its symbol, August the 23rd to September the 22nd um, for the Maiden. And this is, you know, a fairly simple uh, story. Um, it's the second largest constellation in the sky, actually. And it also announces uh, the time of the harvest, you know, August 23rd, uh, 23rd to September 22nd. So whenever Virgo entered the night sky at that point, people knew in ancient times that it was time for the harvest. So and she's the goddess of justice. And the, the reason why she's positioned where she is, is because she needs to be next to Libra and Libra will be the one that we come to next. However, before we get there, just to make sure that we're still on track, we have four more constellations. We've got Gemini, are the twins, but they're not actually twins, they're half brothers. We've got Cancer, the crab that was sent by the Hydra to kill Hercules. We've got Leo, the lion that Hercules choked because he had a special skin that was resistant to any daggers or swords so he took the skin off and put it back on him and then we've got Virgo the maiden who was the goddess of justice so if you've not caught up with those uh, do pause the video alternatively we move straight on to Libra the scale so I spoke earlier about Virgo being the goddess of justice the constellation Libra represents the scales or balance and the symbol of equality the sun passes at this point through Libra on the equinoxes. That's when the day and the night are equal around the world. So the equinox, which we will come to in the next lesson, um, is when the day and the night are equal, of equal length, and that's what those scales represent. Obviously, they also represent the scales of justice. And Libra, as I said, scales, September the 23rd to October the 23rd are the dates for Libra. We now move on to constellation number 10, which is Scorpio, which is also known as Scorpion. Actually, the oldest constellation, it was on the images that I showed you earlier uh, on the Babylonian chart, star charts. It was there, so it's well over three and a half thousand years old, that the fact that they saw Scorpio, Scorpio in the sky. The story about Scorpio is quite a simple one. Um, 
there was a hunter called Orion. Now he boasted that he would kill all the beasts on earth because he was a hunter. However, Gaia, the earth goddess, decided that that wasn't okay. So she sent Scorpio to kill Orion in a bid to stop all the other beasts from being killed. Like I said, oldest um, constellation um, in the night sky and Scorpio is the scorpion from October 24th to November the 21st. Constellation number 11 is Sagittarius, which is also known as the Archer, from November the 22nd to December the 21st. Uh, the symbol for Sagittarius is a kind of uh, compass type arrow in a diagonal northeast direction with an arrow. And Sagittarius was a centaur. He, this means that he was half man and half horse, as you can see from the images. And that was Sagittarius the Archer. So our final constellation is Capricorn, which is also known as the goat. Uh, dates here that we have for Capricorn are December the 22nd to January the 19th. Um, very strange symbol for Capricorn. It's like a curly V with like a kind of ribbon bow around it. Um, but that's the symbol that you've got for Capricorn. And Capricorn uh, is actually, there's not really a story behind it. All it just means is the horned goat. So that's that's effectively what it means. Um, that is my very short journey through our astrological zodiacal um, constellations. However, what I have got for you is a very short video um, straight after at this slide, which kind of summarizes everything that we have gone through in this lesson and will give you a chance to hopefully hone up um, your understanding in terms of where constellations come from and how they've been grouped. Quite an interesting, very short video. Um, I'd like you to watch it. And if you need to catch up taking any notes, then you are very welcome to do so. Hello everyone and welcome back to our universe. Today we'll be answering the question, what are constellations? Throughout time people have looked up the night stars with imagination. In the past our ancestors thought that the patterns in the stars were designed to reflect some of their heroes, gods and goddesses, and even stories that passed on from generation to generation. Today we call these star clusters and patterns constellations. As we developed better and better telescopes and society progressed, astronomers realised that the mythical creatures and gods were actually groups of stars. By 1925, the organisation called the International Astronomical Union established 88 constellations that would officially be recognised by all astronomers. If you look at some of the constellations, you might have a problem actually trying to figure out what our ancestors actually thought they were. I mean, to be honest, if you look at this part of the sky, you can't quite tell what you're looking at. What is it? I have no idea. The idea of constellations is a kind of connect the dots concept. Even though when you do draw the lines, the shapes don't look anything like the creatures. Constellations are drawn with an imaginary boundary or outline, and this can be used to identify them. Constellations are a group of stars in a particular pattern as seen from Earth. If you went to another planet, for example, you wouldn't actually see the same constellations. In fact, you would actually see a totally different pattern of a group of stars. The stars are actually in completely different locations from each other. And if we look at it from a three-dimensional point of view, we can see that some of the stars are nowhere near each other. But seen from Earth or a different perspective, they line up perfectly to show the constellation. It's very similar to a perspective piece of art. From one angle, it can look completely random, but from the right perspective, everything lines up and the picture is created. Since the Earth is moving around the Sun, we see all of the constellations in the sky at various points. In the past, people actually used this information to tell the seasons from one another. Many of these people actually use constellations to actually map and build structures to understand these constellations. And this was to observe and understand the movement of the constellations. In some cases, these maps were actually built to alert them when there was a change in the seasons. For example, when winter turned into spring. 
almost every advanced culture around the world use constellations, and also navigating the oceans. Constellations were actually used to help ships from one location to another. The crew members on the ship knew how to read constellations, so that they could change course based on the pattern of the stars and where they were in the sky. There were a lot of famous constellations. For example, Orion, Leo, Gemini, the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. But because we all live in various parts of the planet, we actually see constellations in different places in the sky. The names for these constellations have actually stayed from the past. This is simply because it's a bit of a tradition and they've already been established as these names. Even though some of them don't really look like what they're trying to describe. I mean, that doesn't look like a lion to me. But in modern astronomy, it's just a great way to navigate around the night sky. And for a beginner in astronomy, it's just a really good way to get used to how the night sky looks. Even though most of it is just simply dots and lines. So, I hope that's given you a great understanding into what constellations are, and also these mythical creatures from the past. Or as I call them, just simply dots and lines that look like lions, apparently. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, click the like button, and if you want to support the channel, click subscribe. Thank you for watching. So I hope that summarised um, our constellations uh, much more succinctly than I have done in the last 35 minutes. That video was approximately four minutes long. However, hopefully that summarised it. Now we've got uh, three tasks as always. Um, my three tasks are always fairly similar. So task one, uh, answer the 10 multiple choice questions that are on the Google quiz. That will be open this week and it will be open for a week. That will test your recall. Your task two is to describe in no more than 150 words what the zodiacal constellations are. What are they? Not tell me what they are, you don't need to tell me what they are, but what are they? Um, so you can just give me a description of what are the zodiacal constellations. And then task three, always, I like to give an extension task and make sure that we are researching beyond uh, what we're learning. Uh, now, I'm gonna, this is, this is all linked with constellations. What is the Almagest? Almagest. All I'm going to tell you, it's very old. It's very old. So what I want you to do is the extension task is to tell me what is the Almagest and what is its, what is its significance? So how is it important to this lesson in regard in regards to constellations? That's what I want you to think about. And they are your three tasks. You just need to go on your Google quiz and you should be able to answer those. The final slide will be a slide um, of just summary notes in regard to the table. So what I have done for you, and you can pause it here, I'm not going to go through each one, but if you require the notes because you didn't manage to get hold of them, you've got the constellation name, what it is, um, or what is it, I should say, the, the dates for each one, uh, remember, these are the astrological horoscope type dates and then the relevant symbol for it. Interesting topic, this. I suggest you go and um, research it further because people always talk about it and they always want to know what their star sign is. But having a fundamental understanding of where they have come from would be interesting. Also, you might want to research, well, what names are linked with which star sign? And are you named perhaps from that star sign? Anyway. That is the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and we will move on to lesson six. I bid you farewell, keep safe and do look after yourselves.